After escaping twice and after several years on the run, Joseph Guzman, the Mexican drug lord most popularly known as El Chapo, was captured and locked behind one of the world's most secure prisons, ADX Florence. But how can we be sure he won't escape again? And what makes this prison so secure that the authorities feel certain they found a permanent home for the drug lord? The notorious inmates of ADX Florence. ADX Florence is home to the worst of the worst, the ones we call society's monsters. And while El Chapo might have been the most ruthless drug lord in recent memory, there are criminals in this world, criminals who are not interested in money or power, criminals who just want to watch the world burn. These criminals match the atrocities of El Chapo committed, and then some. I mean, how many people do you know who are as twisted as John Kaczynski? In 1966, John Kaczynski was a math professor from Harvard University before he randomly mailed 16 homemade bombs to people, killing three of them in the process. When he was caught and tried, the only place that made sense to keep his murder murderous tendencies at bay was a place as secure as ADX Florence. Or what about another wild card? The international terrorist known as Umar Abdul Mutalab. Back in 2009, Umar became known as the underwear suicide bomber when he tried and failed to take down a plane that was on its way to Detroit from Amsterdam. The plane was carrying 289 people. Today, he's spending multiple life sentences behind ADX Florence's concrete walls. Then, there is the notorious Michael Swango, a man so evil they had to nickname him Dr. Death. This diabolical villain used his medical license to poison patients and colleagues. The medical serial killer murdered more than 60 people through his bloody reign. And there is no way on earth anyone would want that man, or any of the men I just mentioned, in a regular prison, which is what makes ADX Florence their perfect home. But what is so special about this Supermax? And what sets it apart from your regular maximum security facility? The structure of ADX Florence. ADX Florence Supermax occupies 49 acres of land on the outskirts of a small rural town in Colorado. Originally built to house 490 inmates, this impenetrable facility has never been full and currently houses 343 of the most high-profile criminals the world has ever seen or heard of. It is divided into six different security levels that vary in their levels of restriction. General Population, the Special Housing Unit, the Special Security Unit, or H Unit, the Control Unit, Intermediate or Transitional Units, and Range 13. General Population is the least restrictive unit. All inmates within this unit are subject to 23-hour lockdowns, with just an hour of recess each day. They are also given phone call privileges that they have to earn. Their one hour of freedom is spent in an indoor swimming pool like concrete pit that is built in such a way inmates won't have an idea where in the prison facility they are. As restrictive as this sounds, El Chapo isn't in this unit. The H unit houses criminals that have been deemed terrorist groups by the Department of Justice. Notorious individuals like Umar Abdul Mutalab stay in this unit. And one of the defining features of this unit is the fact that the cells there don't have a shower. Rather, prisoners are escorted to a shower by guards several days a week. Again, El Chapo is not in this unit. The unit the drug lord resides in is the most restrictive and is called Range 13. Range 13 is a special four-cell wing within the special housing unit. Before El Chapo, only two other criminals have been publicly thrown into Range 13. Thomas Silverstein, the most violent criminal in the history of the United States, and Ramzi Yusuf, responsible for the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. The reason why El Chapo is sharing a prison wing with the worst criminals in history is because of his own history with maximum security facilities. I've published some videos on El Chapo's mastery in the art of prison escape, so why don't we compare his old prison escapes with the design at ADX Florence and see if you could pull off a Schofield here. ADX Florence versus El Chapo's first prison escape. Before ADX Florence, El Chapo has been in and out of two max security prisons in Mexico. And no, he didn't finish his time. He escaped in the most dramatic way possible. The first prison he spent time in was Puente Grande Maximum Security Prison outside the city of Guadalajara. Arrested in 1995 for a bloody shootout in Guadalajara airport two years prior, El Chapo lived like a king in that prison, enjoying everything that he had enjoyed while he was free, good food, women, sports, and running his drug trade with ease. But the Mexican government caught wind of the corruption and decided to extradite him to the US as long as he wouldn't be given the death penalty. El Chapo knew what an American prison meant, so he planned a ridiculously simple escape plan. On the 19th of January 2001, El Chapo was wheeled out of the prison in a laundry basket by a guard in the prison. In ADX Florence, that would be impossible because guards are not allowed to interact with the inmates under any circumstances. But maybe we have
have this all wrong. Everyone knows that most escapes come from corrupt, bribable prison officials. So, could El Chapo corrupt a guard who would help him plan his escape? The answer to that question is extremely unlikely. Any guard he tries to bribe would have already gone through a rigorous vetting process. I don't want to use the word incorruptible for the guards, but it would be extremely difficult to bribe them because both the guards and inmates are constantly rotated and closely watched. And beyond that, anyone scheming to free inmates of this facility, some of whom are considered enemies of the state, may as well consider themselves a dead man. It's not a wise thing to go against the United States of America. Okay, now that we know that it is unlikely that El Chapo will escape ADX Florence the way he staged his first escape, let's consider his second. ADX Florence versus El Chapo's second prison escape. After El Chapo's first escape, another 13 years passed before the drug lord was once again captured. This time, it took a joint effort between the US Drug Enforcement Administration, or the DEA, and Mexican Marines. The date of his capture was the 22nd of February 2014, and this time, everyone went to great lengths to ensure that it would be difficult, if not impossible, to escape. His cell had no windows, inmates were not allowed to talk to each other, and they were not allowed to reach out to family members either. El Chapo spent 23 hours in solitary confinement, in a cell that had one bed, one shower, and a single toilet. Any visitations by family had to first be approved by a judge, and the only luxury he was afforded was $48 for personal hygiene products. Yes, no one was taking any chances this time. But even with all these restrictions, a little over a year later, El Chapo escaped once again. He had found a blind spot for the security cameras in the cell bathroom, and after months of communicating with his men, El Chapo walked into that shower stall and disappeared. But how? This is where it gets more insane. It turns out that El Chapo's men, led by his wife, had been digging a mile-long tunnel for four months that led directly underneath the shower. With the help of a smartwatch that someone had smuggled in, he was able to pinpoint his exact location for his criminal tunnelers. Again, there is no way he would be able to escape using this way in ADX Florence. And some of the reasons El Chapo was able to get his gang members to build a tunnel underneath the second prison he escaped from was because 1. He had bought the land around the prison there in Mexico. 2. He had gotten another corrupt guard to smuggle a smartwatch in for him. And 3. The prison had a blind spot. ADX Florence has no blind spots. It is a fortress that costs $60 million to build. It is surrounded by rocks on all sides and there is an army base, Fort Carson, just a couple of miles away from the prison for extra measure. There is no way on God's green earth that El Chapo will buy land around a prison that the federal government owns. His men would find it difficult, if not impossible, to drill a tunnel in that region. And who is going to smuggle a watch for him? I've already covered how difficult it is to corrupt the gods. The only way out for the man is in a body bag. But that's not even the most terrifying part of this supermax prison. There are some experiences far more horrifying than death, and ADX Florence has a five-star rating in that department. I'm talking about the unbearable living conditions of the range 13 cells that El Chapo and other unfortunate inmates like him have to endure. Life in Range 13 Life in Range 13 is so bad that former guards have disavowed the prison, calling it inhumane. And it's not inhumane for the reasons you think. The only kind of torture in ADX Florence is isolation and deafening silence. The prison is where the worst of the worst go. In ADX, inmates are locked up 23 hours a day in a 7 by 12 foot cell that features a desk, stool, and bed. Each of these pieces of furniture is made from the same material that the cell is made from, poured concrete. The cells are also soundproofed, so inmates can't communicate with anybody except their own imagination. It's also constructed to be so deliberately disorienting that the prisoners never know where in the prison they are. Inmates will find it hard to hurt themselves in this cell even if they tried. The sinks come without taps so that they can't be turned into weapons. Happens. The toilets shut off if clogged, and the showers run on a scheduled timer. Entertainment in the cells is reduced to a black and white TV that plays repeated educational and religious recordings daily. Even the food they eat is monitored. It is hand delivered by the guards so that inmates won't have an opportunity to meet one another. There's a small window in each cell, but it only gives them a view of the sky. And every cell is fitted with pressure pads that allow the guards to know where the prisoner is within their cell at any given time. The entire facility is also surrounded by motion detectors, cameras, and thick steel doors for extra protection. And yes, everything is controlled remotely from a control room. The entire facility can be shut down with a single panic button in the event of an emergency. Already, you can get a feeling of how impossible it would be for El Chapo to escape ADX Florence. But let's humor ourselves a little. Let's imagine that El Chapo found a way to escape his cell, get past all the sensors, cameras, and steel doors. He would still have a 12-foot tall razor wire fence to deal with. And we're not even talking about the countless heavily armed guards that patrol the facility 24-7 and their highly trained dogs. 
and the fact that Fort Carson, which is just down the road, is equipped with a 4th Infantry Division, 10th Special Forces Group, a few hundred combat vehicles, and 74 combat helicopters. There is a reason ADX Florence Supermax is called the Alcatraz of the Rockies. No inmate in the 28-year history of the facility has ever escaped, and from the way things look, El Chapo's case will be no different. He might have escaped twice in the past, but this time, it's safe to say that those days are over.